Old Europe is looking less and less European these days, and that's giving rise to a clash of cultures. Correspondent Greg Burke reports from Brussels. When you think about Brussels, Belgium, you tend to think about the heart of old Europe, a city that's been standing there for centuries, a place where visitors find lots of excellent beers and very fine chocolates. Think again. Think about one of the biggest and youngest Muslim populations in Europe. Right-wing Belgians are worried for their future. It's terrifying me, and it's, it's a threat for everybody who lives in Brussels. And it's, it's, it's important to know that the capital of Europe, Brussels is the capital of Europe, will be Islamized within 10, 20 years. Belgium needed immigrant workers in the 1960s and 70s, but integration didn't come easily for the Moroccans and Turks who arrived. While there are no hard figures, as much as 25% of the city is Muslim, Molenbeek is a part of Brussels with one of the largest percentage of Muslim residents. The socialist mayor of Molenbeek thinks Belgians of different creeds can learn to live together. Be realistic. They're here, they're relatively numerous, and they're growing. Do you want your children and grandchildren to live a kind of civil war, or do you want them to live in peace? The imam of one of the city's main mosques takes a similar line, saying everyone's in the same boat and has to work together so the boat doesn't sink. The mosque shows the vibrancy of the Moroccan community in Molenbeek, with thousands showing up for Friday prayers. But there are problems. The neighborhood is so dangerous, police gave us an escort while taping and told us it would be safer to stay in the car. It's a double danger, both rampant street crime and anti-Western sentiment. Some Belgians claim Muslim enclaves are forming in Brussels and charge that the government is bending over backwards to appease the Islamic community. It's not the Muslims who are integrating in our society, but it is our society who, who adapts to the demands uh, of radical Islam. While Molenbeek may not be the breeding ground for jihadists that some claim it is, dozens of North Africans have been arrested in Belgium over the last few years on terror charges. In Europe, they're already talking about what big city will be the first to have a Muslim majority. Could be here in Brussels. The United States, of course, is still a long way away from that. But if America does have anything to learn from Europe, it's that the lack of integration in the Muslim community comes with a very heavy price. In Brussels, Greg Burke. The debate over the Muslim veil comes at a time when an alarming number of British-born Muslims are being indoctrinated to hate the very country that they live in. These young men are willing to kill thousands of innocent men, women and children. After the attacks of 9-11, there was a big push to integrate the nearly two million Muslims into British society. Easier said than done, a recent survey of Muslims shows that just 44% of 18 to 24 year olds feel Britain is their country. 30% would rather live under Sharia law than democracy. 28% would like to see Great Britain become an Islamic state. And an overwhelming majority, 81%, consider themselves Muslim first and British second. Many also find it difficult living in a modern society while remaining devout. How do you find a way to bring those two worlds together? I mean, it's not an issue of uh, bringing the two worlds together. I have chosen my path and I will stick to it. Muhammad is part of the second and third generation of British Muslim immigrants who are struggling the most to find their place in society. Melanie Phillips has documented the rise of Islamic extremism in Britain. They don't feel they belong because they are stranded between their parents' uh, values and society which they reject and the decadence of Britain. These youngsters are not only detaching themselves from society but are becoming more zealous in their faith. They fall victim to radical Islamists who tell them that Britain and Western values are to be despised. Living in this world, in the Western culture, be patient, you know. To avoid such evils, Muhammad Yudin, like so many other Muslim immigrants, moved into so-called parallel communities, where there's little hint of mainstream British culture. So they move into an area where there are lots of Muslims and lots of South Asians. Areas like East London, which has the highest Muslim population in the country. I feel very safe here as a Muslim. We can practice our faith with no distractions. Spend a few minutes on the streets of East London and you'd think you are in some Middle East capital. There's nothing here that you can't buy, mostly products Muslims want. There's no doubt that Islam today is having a profound impact on British culture and society. Take for example the bank across the street. It offers Sharia check-in accounts and increasingly Muslims are flocking to such banks. Muslims are forbidden under Islamic Sharia law to do business with banks that earn or charge interest. This camera Muslim and this bank 
the Islamic bank. It's uh, following the rule and regulation of Islam. Parallel communities like the one here in East London are emerging all across Europe. And in fact, some Muslims like to claim these areas are off limits to non-Muslims. Case in point, when Britain's Home Secretary John Reid visited East London in September, Abu Izzadeen, a radical Islamic leader, shouted at Reid saying, Reid replied, my friend, There is no part of this country where any of us are excluded Britain has prided itself on being a multicultural society, but Melanie Phillips says multiculturalism has instead allowed radical Islamists to flourish. The host community is saying multiculturalism, everyone's culture is identical value, uh, identical value minority to minority, and identical value minority to majority. So the majority is saying, you want to integrate? Forget it. We don't want you to because we no longer have any belief in what you're going to integrate into. That's, that's really the damage, where the damage has been done. Phillips also says that since 9-11, the British government has bent over backwards to appease and accommodate the radical Muslims. It's taken the line of least resistance, um, and it, it very foolishly, in my view, believes that if you, if you give in to the demands being made by extremists, you kind of make the problem go away. Well, we, don't. we know that that's not true. It makes it worse. There is growing sentiment here in Britain and throughout Europe that Islam and Western values don't mix. Some are even beginning to question the idea of multiculturalism. For now, though, criticism of Islam has once again sparked anger among British Muslims, this time over the veil. And once again, Britain faces the challenge of how to win Muslim hearts and minds that appear closed for the moment. George Thomas, CBN News, London.